us pray again. I need to pray. Father in heaven, as I present these wonderful truths, I just pray that our hearts will be open to receive them, that you will be able to speak in this assembly, not me. Please, Lord, bless us because you've drawn us here this day. Don't let us leave without the blessing you intended. In Jesus' precious name, amen. In a study of the spirit of prophecy, I did discover that when Ellen White had made a statement by inspiration that nine-tenths of the diseases are caused by, or have their origin in the mind. And I struggled with that for years and years. But do you know something? When we investigate the truth, the truth welcomes investigation. In fact, investigation is a welcome visitor in the home of truth. But it is an unwelcome intruder on the property of error. Amen. Come apart and rest a while, or come apart. Human sleep is regulated by a circadian clock located in a tiny cone-shaped but essential intersection of cells in the hypothalamus called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, as seen right in here in the human brain. It is, in turn, fed by ganglion cells in the retina, which take their cues from light and dark cycles, that is, the rising and setting sun, the main determinant of when we want to wake up and when we want to sleep. That's what's going to dictate to us what is going to take place. Now, have you noticed we create lights and all kinds of different implements to enable us to stay up past the time we're supposed to be sleeping? Everything we do seems to go against life. Have you noticed that? We just naturally seek the things that destroy us. A hamster kept awake for three days will die. Randy Gardner, a high school student, stayed awake for a record of just over 11 days as part of a 1964 Stanford University study. By the end, he couldn't talk. Couldn't say a word. So how important is sleep to our ability to communicate? Extremely important. Then tell me this, how much importance does sleep have in God's ability to communicate with us? Without a restful mind, he finds it almost impossible. Almost. He can, but almost impossible. Most people overestimate the amount they have slept. Pennsylvania's Dr. Dingy's estimates that seven and a half to eight hours in bed snuggles down to 6.3 hours of actual shut-eye. Even the circadian larks, he says, the 20% of the population who are early risers and can resist the effects of sleeplessness better than others, eventually have problems. Okay, take a look at this. Dr. Dingy's and a group of colleagues who demonstrated over the past decade just how impairing sleep loss can be. In one of the most extensive sleep studies ever undertaken, the researchers restricted the sleep of their subjects continuously for two weeks while administering psychomotor vigilant tests, that's PVT, every day. The PVT requires a subject to press a button every time a signal appears on a screen. It's not a hard test. So you look at a screen, as soon as the object comes on, you press the button, as soon as you see the object you're looking for. So he noticed that this was declined over the days. When the sleep was deprived, they got worse and worse and worse. The findings were terrifying, in Dr. Dingy's words. The performances of people who got four to six hours of sleep a night declined steadily with every passing day. By the sixth day, a quarter of the six hours group was falling asleep at the computer, lapsing into five times as many microsleeps as they had on day one. Working memory, accuracy, and speed collapsed. Now, do you think the devil wants to get to our mind also? That is the part that they're both fighting for, God and Satan, fighting for the human mind. And Satan has had over 6,000 years to study this elusive, pervasive tissue called the mind. I should say it's not even a tissue, it is ethereal. You cannot see the mind. A doctor cannot take it apart in surgery and put it back together. You can't see it, but yet a brain is a major contributing factor to the use of the mind 
and the development of the mind. And by the way, vice versa. The mind is used to develop the brain and the body, and the body used to protect and develop the mind. Isn't that amazing? It is a complete, perfect circle. We were designed to behold the glory of God. And in beholding the glory of God, we would want to be like God. But here we are, brothers and sisters, in this world of sin and woe, prisoners of war. And what we behold are the things we should probably never behold for the most part. Another study done by Dr. Gregory Belenke. Heads, he heads the Sleep and Performance Research Center at Washington State University in Spokane. He performed much the same experiment on subjects who got seven hours sleep a night. That's more than the average North American person gets. Did you know that? Seven hours of sleep. The seven-hour crowd scores slowed for three days then plateaued at a lower rate of performance, which means that most of us, if not all, very small minority might not be, are suffering from dep deprived sleep. So brains are not operating like they should, on average, all over, every single city. So that's amazing when you think about it, isn't it? And people don't know how important sleep is to their health. Well, Dr. Belenke discovered that these people insisted they were not impaired in any way despite their drooping PVT scores. The first thing sleep deprivation knocks out, in other words, is your ability to tell if you're sleep deprived. Now, isn't that interesting? You don't even know you're sleep deprived. And forget about paying off your sleep debt, he says. It'll take several weeks to get performance back. And it isn't enough to sleep in on the weekends. That's not enough. Won't do it for you. Anything less than five minutes to fall asleep at night means you're sleep deprived. The ideal is between 10 and 15 minutes, meaning you're still tired enough to sleep deeply, but not so exhausted you feel sleepy by day. Is that important? Anybody notice here when you go to sleep at night, sometimes you just hit the pillow and it's gone and you don't know until the alarm goes off the next morning that you were... Have you ever had that? That's sleep deprivation you're suffering from. You should be able to lie in bed, contemplate maybe a Bible verse or something relaxing for 10 to 15 minutes and drift off. That's ideal. And if that's not what you're having, then something is wrong. According to the pen of inspiration, many indulge in the pernicious habit of eating just before retiring. By indulging this wrong practice, it becomes a habit and they feel as though they could not sleep without food. The sleep of such is often disturbed with unpleasant dreams, and in the morning they awake unrefreshed, unrenewed. Oh, how many times has a good meal, as it is called, been purchased at the expense of sleep and quiet rest? We do not see what takes place in the stomach, but the human brain knows and understands all things going on in the system. And how long it takes, because Mother Nature does not pay us back immediately for the wrong things we do. It takes time. For instance, if when you smoked a cigarette, your first drag off a cigarette, you got lung cancer, how many people would start smoking? None, right? But since nature takes a long time to produce the results of wrongdoing, we carry on in the ways that go against life. It is a sin to be ignorant of how to care for the wants of this habitation God has given us. Especially should brain workers begin to be soothed and not in any way excited as they draw nigh their hours for sleep. God designed that the night shall be given to sleep. The night is to be given to sleep. Did you know that when you think about it, the body is only used to carry the brain around and actually to carry the mind around? Yes, that's its purpose, to carry and care for the mind. If we are not aroused to obey the laws God has established in our being, we need not expect that the Lord will work a miracle to counteract our own wrong course of action. Break up 
every habit that is the least injurious to health, for this God requires of us. Then we may ask God in faith to help us, and he will do it. As we walk in the laws of life, God's blessings are contained within those laws. And as you walk in them, you receive the blessing. It's not as if you walk in them and God says, oh, they're obeying the law, so I'll bless them. No, he designed those laws for the benefit of even those who don't know him, that by walking in them, they might learn of him. Amen. Praise the Lord for what he's given to us. But how sweet is rest after a proper amount of labor? Sleep, nature's sweet restorer, invigorates the weary body and prepares it for the next day's duties. Do we have duties every day? God has a plan. Have you noticed usually that our plan B is usually God's plan A? That's because of how we are naturally. We've got to do our own thing. Air, air must be in constant circulation to be kept pure. It excites the appetite and renders the digestion of food more perfect and induces sound and sweet sleep. In regulating the hours for sleep, there should be no haphazard work. How many people plan a weekend? Plan the time when you have to go to work. How many plan the time for sleep? Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that something? We don't. I didn't see one hand go up. We just figure, well, I'm tired now. I better go to bed. And then you're forced to get up because you're really not awake enough to get out of bed and just enjoy the day. How many here, don't even put your hands up, how many here fall into that category? You know, we are violating the laws of life. And if we violate the laws of life, we are violating God's commandments. I'm glad God delights in mercy and I'm glad that he loves us because he waits for us to discover the truth and then encourages us to walk in it. Now I'm going to show you something relatively interesting because we know we need the sleep. I'm asking you plan for that sleep. But look at this. Healthy. Look at all these people. Time for sleep, time for exercise. This reminds me of our home in Bay St. Anne in New Brunswick, Canada. We've got three kilometers of beautiful sandy beach that Jeannie and I like to go walking on, and there's never a soul there. It's just the two of us, as if it's our own beach. And I love the thought. It gives me such relaxation just thinking about walking with Jeannie as we go along in the beautiful Atlantic breeze, unpolluted fresh air, negatively charged, is coming in, and the sand on our feet and the water coming in. Oh, it's just refreshing. The birds, the air, the cleanliness, and the thoughts of God. And we discuss back and forth the things we're going to be doing that day with cleanse programs, maybe programs we're going to get into and make public presentations with. We discuss things. It's really, really quite beneficial. But there is a hidden weapon which literally causes you to come apart. Remember I said come apart and rest a while? Well, Jesus said that, and I added, or come apart. You're going to see something extremely important. It annihilates every effort. How many efforts? Every effort. Every effort to become healthy and underscores the destruction of every good intention. Now, there's a weapon, a German Luger. You notice where it's pointed? At healthy. Because what? It's going to unload its cargo on this nice word. And that cargo is stress. That's going to annihilate everything you could ever imagine. And there it is, stress. It is the silent, ticking time bomb. Stress. So many people suffer from it. And as we were driving here this morning, I noticed all of the stressful people in their automobiles, and there's cell phones going, and there's radios going, and there's cars in and out of the, the, the laneways. Whoa, I tell you, just incredible what you people have to go through day in, day out. In Bay St. Anne, we don't even have a traffic light. If three cars are backed up on the road, that's a traffic jam there. Life is really laid back, I want to tell you. But I was so shocked last week. We were speaking in New York City. And the church we spoke at, they'd say, well, the meeting's going to start at 9 o'clock. At 11.30, we'd get started. Laid back. I couldn't believe it. In a hyper city like New York, they were laid back. It was a Caribbean church. <laughs> 
And they say, the sermon's going, we'd be finished speaking the sermon at 2 o'clock. And I said, well, that's okay. That's no problem. And when we left the church, everybody's still sitting in the pews talking. And <laughs> there was no rush, rush, rush. And Jeannie and I loved it. It was fantastic. So I want you to look at this. What do you, this is New York City here, right? I want you to mark down in your mind how you feel when you look at that picture. You know, just, just look at it for a few seconds, concentrate on it, and mark in your mind or on a piece of paper how you feel. Look at those buildings. Now, mark how you feel when you look at these buildings. Did you feel a shift in your brain? It is absolutely amazing. Take a look at this. This is Los Angeles. This is a restaurant called Chez Denis. This is where this picture is taken from. I used to go there way, way back in, the, in my days of the entertainment business. And it opens at 6 o'clock at night and closes at 6 o'clock in the morning, and all the celebrities go there. But there's the view of L.A. at night right there. Now, take a look. Which light show would you prefer? Look at it. Mark down how you feel your mind or on the paper, and then mark down how you feel as you look at these lights. Wow, the belt of Orion, the place where heaven is. Isn't that beautiful? That is magnificent. Now look at these highways going into L.A. Look at these tributaries winding everywhere. Mark down how you feel as you look at these. How do you feel? Does that feel stressful? Of course, this is taken from a helicopter. Does that make you feel stressful looking at that? Well, look at the difference. Look at these highways. Walking there, smelling the plants, the fragrance. Very important. Now, take a look at this. Look at these roadways. Going to work in the morning. There's the Tamiami Trail right there. Look at all the cars. How would you feel going to work in that kind of a situation? Mark down how you feel as you look at this picture. Focus on it. And then tell me how you feel as you look at this taken about the same time in the morning. And this is in South Africa. Quite a difference, isn't there? Quite a difference. Which area do you think God designed us to be in? The one that provides rest. And you're going to see how important that is. One more shot here for you. This is coming home at night, New York City. Lots of cabs everywhere, coming home at night after a long day in the city. Now, look how you, mark down how you feel looking at that picture. And here's coming home near Bay St. Anne, New Brunswick. <laughs> it is restful. This looks exactly like the park that Jeannie and I go walking in on a regular basis, and there's never anybody there. Well, I shouldn't say never. Sometimes we meet somebody. Sometimes we meet a bear. Sometimes we'll see a deer or something like that. But it is quiet and restful. This is so important. Now, did you know that most people do not recognize, understand, or comprehend the amount of stress that is actually in their life and which is affecting their health in a very negative way? If there are any Orientals in this audience today, I do not want you to answer the next question. What does this sign say? Can anybody tell me? I say most people don't recognize the signs of stress. I'm going to give you an illustration. Do you know what this sign says? Well, <laughs> do not enter. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, if you didn't understand what this sign meant, and you were driving in China, boy, would you be in trouble. Because this is a Chinese stop sign. And you could receive a very big ticket in a language you do not understand. But would it make any difference to you, even though you didn't understand the language? Could you get a ticket anyway? Brothers and sisters, if you don't understand the signs of stress, that doesn't mean you're not going to get stress. Okay? Look at this one. What do you think this is? I knew you were going to say that. This is a Japanese stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, but if you don't understand these then you're going to get in trouble, right? So let's take a look at the 20 signs of too much stress. Get your pens out and write these down. And if you have two or more of these signs, 
you have too much stress in your life. First, obesity and overeating. Now, just because you're thin, overeating can still be a problem. Okay? And obesity, a lot of times in obesity, people turn to food as a comfort to handle the stresses they are experiencing. And they get in trouble. So it is very much related. One child we saw, age 12, 214 pounds, little girl, and her stress came from her parents fighting. She would resort to cookies and things like this and keep eating because of the stresses that poor little child was experiencing. And you know, we always, we always look at things the wrong way because of our natural fallen nature. That is a soul that needs prayers and help and comfort in Jesus Christ. Because there's your only source of no stress right there. I don't know how the world does it. Without Jesus Christ, what kind of a life can you have? A life that leads to death and no hope. Excessive alcohol, second sign of too much stress. Loss of appetite or anorexia. A loss of appetite can be from a physical stressful situation. You don't feel like eating, your stomach tightens. In a mental stressful situation, the food seems comforting. Yes. Third, fourth sign, people who smoke, smoke more. I used to smoke five packs of cigarettes a day. And I had major, major stress. And I drank 30 cups of coffee with two heaping sugars each day. Two heaping sugars in each cup. And by God's grace, quit. All done. Couldn't even desire one these days. Oh, praise the Lord for what he can do. Increased coffee drinking. People irritate you more. <laughs> Few laughs going on, right? You'll find that, especially in churches sometimes. Oh, those people, I wish they'd just, mm, you know. That's a sign you're too stressed. Substance abuse. Can't make decisions. The brain is very stressed. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I can't make a choice. Now, it seems to me like maybe, maybe ladies have very high stress signs because you ever noticed, brothers, how long it takes a woman to decide what she's going to wear because she, she can't decide? <laughs> well, that's not a, stress, a sign of stress. That's a sign of choosing what she feels is right for the day. But I thought I'd throw that in there. You realize that. You're going to realize why I speak the way I do. Why I encourage a person to have joy in their heart. But at the same time, I'm going to show you some shocking things. And the shock needs to be balanced with a lightened attitude, a smile once in a while. Does that make sense to you? Because if all we receive is bad news, we'd leave this place with a frown on our face and disease being produced in our bodies. Amen? So Jesus came to give us hope and at the same point, point out our sinfulness and our need of a Savior. When people were in the presence of Jesus, they never felt condemned. They felt convicted. That's all the difference, isn't it? Unable to concentrate. I am a monomaniac. Maybe some of you in here are monomaniacs. That's a term that describes somebody who can only focus on one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Increased and suppressed anger. A sign that things are stressing you and you're unable to express it for one reason or another. We're going to get more into that a little later on. You lose your sense of humor. Somebody says something to you that you would have laughed at years ago and all of a sudden you don't see it. That's a sign the brain is struggling. Did you know we were made to enjoy life? Enjoy living, smile, enjoy the earth, enjoy the things God has made for us to enjoy. You become paranoid. What's in that? Will this, will this, will this hurt me? What is that? Who's doing this? Who's do You're paranoid instead of enjoying life. Feeling out of control, there's a big one. It's as if you're living life in a blender and the speed is varying from hour to hour. You feel like this, you've got too much stress. You do not finish things. This stresses me because whenever I start something, I like to finish it before I go on to something else. Otherwise, I become, become distressed. 
Hmm. Excessive emotion, crying, excessive. Only interest is work. What do you talk about when you get home? Does the day in the office or the day at work, does it permeate the dwelling where you live? Is it what you think about first when you get up in the morning? Is it the last thing you think about when going to sleep at night? If so, your work is taking over your life and it's causing a lot of stress. And a lot of people do these things and they don't know they're stress-related. That's why I put those signs up there. You don't know. So write these down and look at them and examine your life. Permanently tired. Tired when you go to bed, tired when you get up. Tired throughout the day. Permanently tired. Decreased sex drive. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ could have made us, as Pastor David Asherick has stated, we could have procreated with a handshake. But God had something different in mind. He wanted us to enjoy our physiology. And most people don't. Nail biting. Change jobs often. These are the 20 signs of too much stress. If you have two or more, seriously look at your life and what you're doing. Has everybody got those? Got them down? Good. Now, if you see anything other than two dolphins in this picture, you've got stress. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm seeing more than, more than what's two dolphins there, huh? Those who make, this is such an important statement, those who make great exertions to accomplish just so much work in a given time and continue to labor when their judgment tells them they should rest are never gainers. They are living on borrowed capital. They are expending the vital force which they will need at a future time. God has provided us with constitutional force which will be needed at different periods of our lives. If we recklessly exhaust this force by continual overtaxation, we shall sometime be the losers. Have you ever read that statement before? Wow. You know what the vital force is? Have you ever studied that? is vital force. Adam and Eve had 20 times, I believe it is, the vital force that people have today. 20 times. Look at the human race that's still going on and proliferating. That's got to tell you something about the incredible vital force that Adam and Eve had, that the human race is still going. Wow. And that's the vital force we're going to get back when Jesus Christ comes in glory. Won't that be something? If you think you're healthy now, boy, wait till you get that new body. <laughs> I can't wait. But vital force, that's your enzyme bank. Vital force. So you are born with a certain amount of enzymes. I'm going to put some years up here for you. And the years there are going right up to 100, okay? Just for sake of, of argument here. We should be well past 100, by the way, and in health. But in, in your, your genes, in your makeup, you have genes that are coming from your parents, mother and father. They give to you a certain vital force or an enzyme bank. And throughout your life, you use up that enzyme bank by dealing with situations, by the food you eat. But it's a certain amount of enzymes that were meant to last you your lifetime. Now look at this. If you, uh, if you got an enzyme bank that's full, and both your parents were really healthy, and you decide you're going to party hardy and eat all the wrong foods, here's what happens. Your body starts to use up the enzymes meant to keep you healthy in repairing body tissues. So you might use up half your enzyme bank by the time you're 30 years old. And you say, hey, everything's going fine. I'm doing just fine eating all the wrong foods and nothing appears to be wrong. But guess what? Half your life has just been spent and you haven't realized it. Now, I want to show you something interesting from the spirit of prophecy. Tea, coffee, or flesh meats. Tea, coffee, or flesh meats. These are all too stimulating, too great attacks to the nervous system. They do not impart strength, but take the strength from the nerves and use reserve force. 
vital force to compensate for the wrong we are doing. I want to show you these blueberries because blueberries are super high antioxidant foods. Does anybody know what a, a free radical is? Well, when you take a food, you see here is an atomical structure. Around these are little tiny spheres that you can take a look at right here. This is the atom, and then there are the electrons which surround the atom. And these are in pairs, you may notice. When you heat a food, some of those electrons are destroyed. And then that becomes a free radical. And it will go throughout your system hitting tissues, hitting red blood cells to try and gather to itself more electrons to even out the pairs that should be there. Does everybody understand that? So that is what a free radical does. And heat destroys the, the anatomical structure so that it becomes a free radical. Okay? Now the answer is, praise the Lord, we are going to deliver antioxidants. And blueberries are loaded with antioxidants. That's why I put them there. What the antioxidant does is it provides the missing electrons, which the free radical is missing, while not damaging itself at all. Isn't that a blessing? Hmm. And so now, no more free radical damage. Should you have berries, berries, by the way, berries are all loaded with, free rat, with uh, antioxidants, and cacao nibs. Anybody heard of cacao? Cacao is the highest antioxidant food on the planet, about 26,000 times more powerful than blueberries. Wow. So I want you to have, cacao is what they make cocoa from, and chocolate, right? But it's really bitter. But if you mix it with goji berries or other berries and chew it up, it tastes like chocolate because you add that natural sweet to it. And it is fantastic for your brain to stop the free radical damage, loaded with antioxidants. Now back to our program. Right in here, we'll take this person, let's just, let's just say that you decide, I'm gonna live a life that's totally healthy. Well then, the enzyme bank that you have starts to work to preserve your life and health, and you'll use up half your enzyme bank by about age 60. Excuse me, wait a minute. You've used up half by age 60? What does that tell you about how long you may live? Over a hundred. Over a hundred. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That is so profound. Spirit of prophecy. While nothing is gained by despondency. Do you know what the word despondency means? You're worried about things. You have anxiety about things. You're despondent. You're separated from reality, and you've got a world going on which you were never meant to live in. Much is lost. While cheerfulness and a calm resignation and peace will make others happy and healthy, it will be of the greatest benefit to one's self. How important is the mind? Wow. Wow. Sadness and talking of disagreeable things is encouraging the disagreeable scenes, bringing back upon oneself the disagreeable effect. God wants us to forget all these. Not look down, but look up. And notice she repeats the word up. Up, up. She's trying to express, don't look at the news. It's discouraging. It causes despondency. And we watch the same broadcast over and over again. As we think about it, it's replayed in our mind. And we lose a sense of reality. And you may think, well, the news is reality. No, even though it is a form of reality, it's not the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality is heaven itself. And as long as we focus on the things of this earth, we're going to lose heaven. We are stamped according to what we view it the most. Yes. Now, a study was done watching people who were watching a program on television. Some of these people were watching a program that was all about violence. Others watching nature scenes. Others watching children playing or funny things. And their brains were wired and set to in a graph where they could see how the brain was responding to what was being viewed. Other people did not see the televisions, but their brains were wired exactly the same and set to graphs, and they were watching the faces only of the people who were watching the television programs. And guess what? 
the responses in both groups were identical. If you're watching the face of somebody who's watching a murder take place, you will have the same reaction. Well, somebody who's got laughter, you'll have the same reaction. If somebody's up here and they got a smile on their face, you should see the difference I see in your faces when I put a smile on. Some people automatically go. <laughs> it's true, it affects you. It shows me we are affected by what we see. By what we see. Ah, wake, look up. She says, sadness deadens the circulation in the blood vessels and nerves and also retards the action of the liver. The liver has 1,200 functions we know of. One of the first things the liver stops producing is a substance which prevents the buildup of fibroids in the female system. Yes. And as soon as the liver becomes stressed or congested, it stops producing glucuronic acid, which balances all the hormone levels. Isn't that amazing? And they wonder why disease is running rampant. What's the stress level like? The action of the liver, it hinders the process of digestion and of nutrition and has a tendency to dry up the marrow of the whole system. It is written. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. That inspired writing is so deep, it is incredible. But it is true. Do our thoughts discover ourselves? Yes. Now this is um, some zebra on the plains of the Serengeti in Africa. Now notice the zebra with its head up. Do you think it's wondering, where's that lion? I wonder where he is. I know he's around here somewhere. I gotta watch. I, maybe I shouldn't eat today. Maybe I should just watch things because he's gonna attack. Do you think that's how the zebra thinks? You know that's not true, don't you? Jeannie and I have watched them and they're munching, enjoying themselves. And they don't get all excited until the actual event happens. If a lion shows up, they get excited. But zebras only activate the stress response when necessary. So the lion shows up and voila, you're going to have a zebra running for life. But you know what happens? It's all over in less than a minute, the stress hormones. Because either that zebra becomes lunch or it gets away. And as soon as it gets away, guess what it does? It goes around and tells all of its friends exactly what it just went through and how they all should be afraid of eating grass when there are lions around. just eating away, eating away. But what happens to us in North America? An alarm clock jolts us from a sound sleep, maybe, and instantly the stress hormones are kicked in. And now you gotta wonder, who did I miss the alarm? What time? Oh, so time. I gotta get my shower. I gotta get my food. Maybe I don't have time for breakfast. The traffic's gonna be built up, so you're going to work, and the radio's playing, and oh, the boss, if I'm late again, the boss is gonna be upset, and you don't even know if the boss is in today. And so you create this, this, this physical stress by what might be. What kind of a world have we created? Wow. So now these, these zebras here, as humans, our stress response is usually activated psychologically. The stress response of animals is activated physiologically. They react to real situations, we, for the most part, react to imagined situations. And this is so rich. The vast majority of mental stress is self-inflicted by trying to meet the expectations of others, whether they are real or perceived. And if you just look at your life, you'll realize that what I'm saying is absolutely true. How many people live their lives meeting the expectations of others or the perceived expectations of others? Wow. Have you ever tried to live the expectations of God and his law? Has it stressed you out doing so? I hope it has. And you realize you can't do it. But he can do it through you. And there's where the stress stops. <laughs> he meant to enjoy life and allow him to live in you. And this way, he'll prepare you not only to bless others and yourself, but you will be in eternity.
allowing him to live through you. Every cellular structure in your body experiences every emotion your brain produces because they are all inextricably linked together through the nervous system. So the thought patterns affect every other organ in the body and every other organ in turn affects the brain. So what this young woman is thinking is going to affect her knees, her elbows, breast tissue, lung tissue, pancreas, uterus, bowels. It's going to affect every cell in her body. Studies done by Dr. Esther Bergman, who's a, a, neuro, a scientific neurologist, what happened with her was she discovered through electron microscopes and all of the, the, the work, the investigative work that scientists have done, did you know there are nerves going into and out of every cell in your body? Tiny, tiny nerves that are message delivery systems from the cell to the brain, from the brain to the cell. This shocked her, and it should shock all of us. How great is what God has made. Wow, David says what? I am fearfully and wonderfully made and that my soul knoweth right well. And so the study done by Dr. Esther was what's called the psychoneuroimmunoendocrinology study. Long, long word, but it has to do with your mind, your nerves, it has to do with your immune system, and it has to do with your hormone system. And they've discovered all four systems are inextricably linked together. And they all talk to each other continually. They used to think, well, he's an endocrinologist, so he does his special work in endocrinology. He's a cardiologist, so his work is the heart. If you focus on either one of those, you are heading down a wrong path. The human body was meant to operate as a whole. To understand one part only is to be in ignorance. Wow, we could never exhaust the learning that is here for us to, to experience. And by the way, if you study anatomy and physiology, did you know you're studying the image of God? And you will learn principles of life that you would never have learned had you not studied anatomy and physiology. So, what this poor young woman is thinking, if she inherited weak lungs from her parents, then the first place that her thoughts are going to have an ill effect on is going to be her lungs. If she inherited a weak pancreas, that's where it's, or a weak heart, that's where it's going to show up. Weak pancreas, weak liver, weak stomach, that's the first place it'll show up too. Weak intestines, that'll show up there. It is absolutely astounding how many things can take place from our thoughts alone. If you're your whole nervous system going up the spine, sometimes that can produce achiness in the lower spine. Also, there's the immune system, which is absolutely incredible. That's one of my favorite studies. The nervous system is my key one. Now the lymphatic system, the immune system, is my second, and I just love it. Did you know that a woman has a system that is far weaker than a man when it comes to being immune to things? Her immune system, a man has an immune system of almost 100 times stronger than a woman, but a woman has so many more nerves than a man does. And when those nerves are properly stimulated through love and affection, her immune system becomes two to three times stronger than a man's. A woman was designed to receive in order to give. And a man was designed to give in order to receive. Wow. So when you look at that, when you look at that, gentlemen, if your wife is not loving enough, it's because you're not giving enough. And if the wife is not giving enough, she's not loved enough. But I tell you, when you love your wife, she can give you more than you can ever handle. Amen. So, if that's true about negative thoughts, it's also true about positive thoughts. Positive thoughts can affect all of these organ systems, including the lymphatic system, to a wonderful, healthy state. That state of mind is so important. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's happy with me, you know that? <laughs> Do not carry on forgiveness because it will kill you. Does it not say God delights in mercy? Micah 7, verse 18. The Lord 
delights in mercy. Ought we not to be the same? We're made in his image. We should delight in saying, that's okay, it's all right. In fact, if Jesus had not forgiven those who crucified him, he never would have come out of the grave. Because unforgiveness is sin. The reason why God will have to destroy at the end is because they did not want his forgiveness. Yeah, not because he wouldn't give it. What you think about me does not affect me. It affects you. I hope that makes sense to you. Don't let anyone live here rent-free. Only the one who paid the price, Jesus Christ, should be allowed to live here. Peace, joy, ah, how we lose it. The effect of stress on our internal organs. I want you to see some things here. There is only one disease. And I know some people will say, you're, you're crazy. There's only one disease. There's no such thing really as heart disease. Even though it is there, it's really not the cause. The heart is not the problem. There's no such thing as lung disease and liver disease and pancreas disease and bowel disease. The only disease is diseased blood. Poor blood. Because the blood services every organ. And if it brings in things which the organs cannot live with, which the organs cannot heal and repair themselves with, then the organs become sick. Let me illustrate it like this. If you have a large aquarium in your home and you have something happening wrong with your fish, do you take the aquarium loaded in your vehicle and take it to the vet? Or do you phone the vet and say, I've got a problem with my fish? Well, you would phone, right? And what will the vet say? The vet will say, bring me in a sample of the water and I can tell you what's wrong with the fish. You see, Jesus Christ is the blood, the living blood, right? The blood of Christ is our healing, is it not? When you take the blood of Christ and put Christ's sacrifice and his perfect life into every area of your life, every area becomes healed. But when you do not put Christ into all you do, then all you are is not healed. You still have some issues. And so it is with the blood see people change their body into a healthy body with really healthy blood, that's what works. I've seen thyroid issues disappear by making healthy blood. I've seen lung issues, even cancer, disappear by making healthy blood. To say that the organ is the problem is really wrong. It's just like saying, officer, this car broke the speed limit. I had nothing to do with it. Tell me, brothers and sisters, was the driver the problem or the car? With the human body, the body is not the problem. It's the mind. It's the driver. And if the driver puts in things that make poor blood, the body's going to become very sick. Put in the living foods more. and Get your body's blood in perfect condition, and you will see your body heal. That's the law of life. And by the way, a medical doctor, a friend of mine, agreed with me, finally, when he understood the importance of the blood. He agreed, an OBGYN. He said, you know, you're right. You're right. Yes, but off, have you noticed that as soon as somebody says something that we're not used to, we reject it? Nope, oh, nope, that's not true. We don't investigate. We're not taught to investigate. We're never taught to question things, to see are these things true or not. And you know, we often look at the degrees behind a person's name and use that to tell us if it's the truth. Well, we should be flipping it around. What they're saying should credify their credentials. You see? Look, is it the truth? If it's a farmer, we should look at, is it the truth? If it's, if it's a pastor, is it the truth? If it's a medical doctor, is it the truth? If it's a lawyer, is it the truth? That is the criterion, and the Word of God is all we can use to judge that with. Amen. So, let's take a look at the internal organs. Adrenal glands and kidneys. I put this one here up first because it is a major, major problem with people. Fear triggers the adrenal glands, which are just above the kidneys, and this affects the kidneys. Now, here's a picture of what they're like right there. There's your adrenal glands. Almost looks like a party hat, doesn't it? A little bit. Adrenal function becomes strained by this fear component of stress, producing a constant fight-or-flight condition. 
In time, this exhausts the adrenals, producing an even deeper tiredness. At this point, many take stimulants for their tiredness, believing that the stimulants will produce more energy. Yep, the adrenal glands, that's the problem. No, it's the thinking and the food. Stresses at work, relationship stresses, and sense of failure. Many people, they have a sense of failure about their life. Your greatest aspirations can only be met by sharing the truth. With whatever talents God has given you, sharing the truth will provide you with the most peace, the most excitement, the greatest feeling of fulfillment in sharing the truth. And so a lot of times, these first things, they'll affect our adrenal glands big time. Adrenal fatigue, you know, common, common symptom. The spleen, how many know what the spleen looks like? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many people here? We got about six or seven people out of all you that are gathered here that know what the spleen looks like. I'm going to show you just in case. Look at that. Almost looks like a tongue on its side, doesn't it? Stress consumes a large amount of the vital force produced by the spleen. With less vital force in the spleen, heat production diminishes and circulation to the extremities is compromised. Therefore, you will feel cold in the extremities and have pale color of the skin. Less heat also produces subtle constriction of vessels, producing tension, tiredness, and muscle fatigue. Do you know where the spleen is located? Well, a few do. A few do. If you take a look at these organs, look at the stomach right there. I'll show you where the spleen goes, right in behind the stomach. If you look at it from behind, you'll see that the spleen is located right there, right behind the stomach. That is such an important organ, the spleen. How many know how to look after the spleen? What should you do to your body to make sure you have a super healthy spleen? Make good blood. It is so simple. What should you do to, to heal your thyroid problem? Make good blood. What about a lung problem? Make good blood. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Surely, you have to go to 10 years to university to learn that, didn't you? A six-year-old child can comprehend that, brothers and sisters. And health should be within the reach of everyone, young and old, rich and poor. Make good blood. The blood flow and the quality of blood itself are directly affected by the stomach and spleen. So stress can take your good blood and turn it bad. The blood carries what can best be described as a balanced electromagnetic fluid through which all organs are maintained. Should this composition be off in someone having a particular disposition, this can produce palpitations or tachycardia. All stress affects the heart first. Do you want to know some scientific proof that you wouldn't have to take years in a lab to discover? If someone presented before you a circumstance which, which caused you to become very afraid, what would happen to your heart? Boom, 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 boom. What if you had a really super joyful experience? What would happen to your heart? Boom, 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 boom. You see how, the, what if you were thinking, just thinking about a joyful experience? What would, what would your heart be doing? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> You're excited. You think about a trip somewhere, right? Oh, a holiday. Oh, you just feel, you, you want to get there. I show you the thoughts affect your organs. How many people, if they come across a very fearful situation, get sick, throw up? Think about it. Only the thought caused that. Thoughts permeate every muscle tissue, every organ tissue, every blood cell in your body. Thoughts. Ellen White had this to say. I was thinking of Pastor Randy Skeet last night. A clogged stomach means a clogged brain. Daniel would accept everything from Babylon except what? The food they were serving. And I've come to the conclusion that I think Nebuchadnezzar, when he went and ate grass with the cows for seven years, it had to take that long to clean out his system and get his blood clean 
so he could understand God's message to him. <laughs> you know? Don't, don't, uh, don't take me my exact quote on that. That's probably not the reason why he had to spend seven years. He could have done it in less time at a healing center somewhere, but the Lord had him out there for a reason. Also, she said this, the, the affliction of the stomach afflicts the brain. Now, science has been able to prove this is true. And some of these statements, when I first started studying them, didn't make sense. But if you stay with something long enough, it will start to make sense to you as you pray and go through it and ask the Lord to guide you and show you truth. Too much food or the wrong kind of food hinders brain activity. You know, when Daniel was on that pulse diet, do you think when he said to Ashpenaz, you know, we're going to go vegan vegetarian, do you think he's, that was something he did just then? Or was it something he was used to? He was something he was used to. Now, do you think Ashpenaz said, okay, no problem. Oh, ask the, the staff in the kitchen to make some scrambled tofu for Daniel and his friends. No. He probably had to sneak into the kitchen cellar and get the food out and give them raw vegetables, fruits and things. And so they had all this wonderful living food feeding their body, making the brain more accessible to the Spirit of God. The thyroid function, in conjunction with the rest of the organs, notice this, it absorbs vital force and nutrients from the blood, creates its own specific compositions, and releases these at a certain point predetermined by the brain. This is normally done at regular intervals and establishes the metabolism of the body. If there is not enough good nutrition due to stress causing poor digestion, the thyroid actually has to work much harder to keep the metabolism constant. This overworking of the thyroid creates a diminished thyroid function and is sometimes perceived as a thyroid problem. If stresses are removed and proper dietary guidelines are followed, the thyroid can relax and function normally. One woman came to our office, I checked her, she had a thyroid problem. Thyroid was out quite far in her neck, you could see it was quite pronounced. Her doctor had made an appointment for her to meet with a surgeon and she was going to have her thyroid removed exactly about, I think it was about five or six weeks after she had seen me. So I gave her something to do because she, she heard of what happened at her center with the work and prayed with her, gave her dietary. She came back in four weeks and her thyroid, totally normal. And what did she do? Made good blood. And so she kept her appointment to have her thyroid checked before surgery. And so they performed and the doctor that was, do, that was examining her, he, he said, what am I looking for? And she said, the thyroid. He said, okay, fine, the thyroid. So he checked the thyroid and he sent the reports to the surgeon. The surgeon's office phoned her and said, we'd like you to come in tomorrow morning and have your thyroid removed. And she said, but my thyroid is healthy. And they said, yes, but it might get sick again. So we want to remove it. Brothers and sisters, we're talking about Egyptians here. Egyptians, because for the most part, they know not God. They're taught by evolutionists. And they figure this body part can be extracted like we're treated as a Frankenstein's monster. Put this in, take this out, add this chemical, put this steel piece in a heart shunt, and so on and so forth. This is not the way the body was designed to work. Not at all. So there's the thyroid, there's where it's located, and I'll show you a little bit larger picture. There's the larynx right there, and there's a thyroid just below it. And this can swell to enormous sizes, and it's all because of poor quality blood, which can be caused by poor quality thinking. Chronically activating the stress response can cause memory problems, increase the risk of depression and anxiety disorders, and even accelerate brain aging. In other words, we humans are smart enough to make ourselves sick with thoughts, emotions, and memories. 
And we westernized humans live long enough for the consequences to eventually haunt us big time. It's Professor Robert Sapolsky. He studied 30 years in the Serengeti studying baboons and the stress hormones in their body in different situations. And he realized North Americans, from the time you get up to when you go to bed as a rule, you're bathing your body in stress hormones through our thoughts mostly. Chronic or lasting stress releases certain hormones that have been found to, what's that word? Kill cells in the hippocampus, one of the major memory centers located in the temporal lobes. Stress from having too much to do, day in and day out, or from having unresolved emotional trauma clearly hurts brain function. That's from the world's leading authority on neurology, Dr. Daniel Amen. From Dr. Robert Sapolsky again, here's a principle. During stress, the body diverts blood away from the internal organs to the extremities and other muscle groups where it may be needed in order to remove you from a stressful situation. So there you go. The response of the body to stress, whether it is real or imagined, is the same. Isn't that interesting? According to Professor Sapolsky, and the nervous system reacts the same to psychological stress as does to physiological stress. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. All of nature, you'll notice this, does not operate under stress at all. The seasons change when the earth is ready and not before. There's a lesson right there, isn't there? Oh, boy, now that's a traffic jam. This is in Denmark. Does that make you feel stressed? Watch this. A Danish study which followed up 2,465 bus drivers over seven years found that objective workload as measured by the intensity of traffic on the driver's routes, that is you got to get to the terminal at such and such a time, you got to be there, that's what it's talking about, was the factor most strongly associated with death or admission to hospital with acute myocardial infarction. That's a long term for a heart attack. Stress related to so what traffic can do for you. Look, there's not even any yellow lines you can see on here. Motorcycles, cars, everywhere. Don't want to live there. Oh, look at this. In the world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Now, let's just say you are here. And you think some things are going to make you happy in life. Somebody says, you know, if you want to be happy, you got to go to Better Job Junction. And you'll be much happier there at Better Job Junction. So you pack up things, the wife, the children, and you go there. But what do you discover? It's not there. And somebody says, oh, that's because you need to go to More Moneyville. And so you, you pack up everything. Well, I want to be happy, so I'm going to go to More Moneyville. And as soon as you get there, you discover after a while, what? You're not happy. And somebody says, don't you know anything? You've got to go to many friends' farms. The more friends you have, the happier you're going to be. Great associations. Guess what you're going to find? That is not true. And so they say, your friends will tell you, you know what you need? A dream home. Go to Dream Home Hills. And <laughs> just build it, and you're going to find, oh, that's just perfect heaven right there. So you pack up everybody, and there you go. And what are you going to discover once more? It's not working. So somebody says, long vacation valley. That's where you need to go, get away from things, you know? So you, you, you're used to following other people's advice by now, so you go there and discover it's not there. And while you're on vacation, somebody tells you, Retirement Ridge, that made me happy. you got to go to Retirement Ridge. So you go there, pack up everything, and you're going to discover the exact same thing as you did in Better Job Junction. All those years wasted. Look at the key right here. The key is this. Happiness is not a destination. It is a decision. Happiness is not a thing. It is a thought. You can be happy wherever you are. God cannot make you happy, and Satan cannot make you sad. Those are choices, brothers and sisters. Choices you must make. Now, I want to share with you something incredible. This is what it's all leading to here. Telomeres are DNA protein complexes at the end of chromosomes that directly affect how quickly cells age. It's like shoelaces with a plastic end on the end of them. Everybody know what that's like? If that plastic end comes off, the shoelace does what? 
unravels. It's the same thing, and you see the, 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 the DNA becomes unraveled. The chromosomes unwind as the telomeres unwind. So they protect the ends of chromosomes and help them to remain stable. In simple terms, as your telomeres get shorter, your life gets shorter. Guess what stress does? Unravels the telomeres. So your life expectancy shortens. Now there's a little repair station of an enzyme called telomerase. This is good news. It repairs the telomeres so you don't age as fast and the chromosomes can replicate themselves perfectly. Telomerase is an enzyme that repairs and lengthens telomeres. Telomerase is also vital for the maintenance of the immune system cells. Good news, brothers and sisters. Professor Dean Ornish, Preventive Medicine Research Institute in Sausalito, California, USA, and colleagues at the University of California, San Francisco, USA, did a pilot study of 30 men diagnosed with low-risk prostate cancer who were asked to make comprehensive lifestyle changes. These consisted of a three-day intensive residential retreat and a diet with only 10% of calories from fat, low in refined sugars, and rich in whole foods, fruits, and vegetables. Their diet was further supplemented with vitamins and fish oil, which I don't agree with. <laughs> they also did moderate aerobic exercise, had stress management, relaxation techniques, and breathing exercises. Telomerase activity was measured at baseline and again at three months. 24 patients had sufficient data for analysis, and they discovered the researchers found that levels of telomerase in the blood increased by 29% over three months. Wow! So what does getting the stress under control do? Increases your life. Amen. Kind of good news, isn't it? <clears throat> Telomerase is an enzyme that adds DNA repeats to the end of DNA strands in the telomere regions. That's the end of the chromosomes. And there's a little telomerase machine right there. This region of nucleotide repeats called telomeres contain non-coding DNA material and prevent constant loss of important DNA from chromosome ends. So your cellular structures repeat perfectly. As a result, every time the chromosome is copied, only 100 to 200 nucleotides are lost, which causes no damage to the organism's DNA. That is so good. Telomerase is a reverse transcriptase that carries its own RNA molecule, which is used as a template when it elongates telomeres, which are shortened after each replication cycle. So this is good news. Now the key is, how are these telomerase enzymes produced? Peace and happiness actually lengthen your life, and stress shortens your life by how they affect your telomeres, and in particular, telomerase. There's a nice study done by Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, Elisa Ypel, and of course, Dr. Robert Sapolsky. But look at this. For every year a person takes care of a chronically ill child, you age six years on your telomeres. What will stress do? Is God joy? Can you see how he is life? Joy. Look at this city. Wow. That's New York. Excessive pressures, worries, and anxieties are not stress. In order for them to become stress, you have to make them so. Your mind reacts to what you see, hear, taste, smell, or touch. These are all things you've discovered this morning. But your brain can also react to situations created only in the mind. Even though the situations are not real, your mind, by default, makes your body think they are. And your body responds accordingly. How important is it to think good? Wow. Stress is your response to real sensory input as well as imaginary created input. Your brain is intimately attached to every single cell in your body. Now look at these zebras. Why don't they get ulcers? Because they do not spend their day with their bodies bathed in stress hormones. That's why. You take a look at this. This is, this is beautiful uh, photographs. We may behold and admire the work of God in the natural world, but the human habitation is the most wonderful. Studying this enables you to understand God and see the real beauty of what he has made. 
Now, are you one of those people who look in the mirror and all you can see are things that are wrong with you? Are you one of those? Because if you are, you're making a big mistake. You ought to love what you see. You ought to be thankful for who you are and what we have been given. Amen. You might not be perfect in your own eyes, but this is the most important part of everything I'm going to present to you. And I pray you're going to be able to listen with me for a minute because this is the icing on the cake. This is an ALS person. My father died of ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Watch this. The work of Dr. Gaber Maté, author of When the Body Says No, a friend of his, Dana Johnson, a researcher friend of mine, and a registered nurse even recovered from Lou Gehrig's disease by learning to respect all aspects of her body. She was in a wheelchair and her whole body was like jelly. And she recovered totally. Are you ready? Look at this. She, uh, she had unconditional appreciation for her whole body, beginning with her hands and focusing on different body part every day. She'd spend 15 minutes looking at her hands and go, you are so incredible. The things you can do and the things you have done in my life. And instead of looking at the negative, she began to look at the positive. This is so important, brothers and sisters. So important, I cannot stress it enough. She came to see that since childhood, she had believed that in order to be of service, acceptable to others and worthy of herself, she had to sacrifice her own needs. And you might think, well, Jesus Christ sacrificed his own needs. No, he didn't. Jesus Christ fulfilled his need. You know what his need was? For us to be with him throughout eternity. And he did whatever it took to fulfill his need. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. So there she was, a victim of what she thought people expected of her. Now, this is an interesting cancer research here. The researchers found that emotional factors and social involvement were more important to survival than the degree of disease itself. Wow. And you're going to see some exciting uh, things here. In most cases of breast cancer, the stresses are hidden and chronic. That means continual. They stem from childhood experiences, early emotional programming, and unconscious psychological coping styles. They accumulate over a lifetime to make someone susceptible to disease. One of the chief ways that emotions are biologically in cancer causation is through the effect of hormones. Some hormones, estrogen for example, encourage tumor growth. Others enhance cancer development by reducing the immune system's capacity to destroy malignant cells. Hormone production is intimately affected by psychological stress. Wow, okay, look at this one. This is a natural killer cell in the body. Natural killer cells will hunt out and destroy cancer cells. And here's a picture of one attacking two cancer cells. There's the NK cell right in the middle. Isn't that amazing? These guys are warriors. But in most cases, they're non-existent in the body due to stress. Due to stress. That's what stops them from being activated. Stress. You've got to ask yourself, do I have joy in Christ today? Am I stressed at all? Ha! Huh. Research has suggested for decades that women are more prone to develop breast cancer if their childhoods were characterized by emotional disconnection from their parents or other disturbances in their upbringing if they tend to repress emotions, particularly anger, if they lack nurturing social relationships in adulthood, and if they are altruistic, compulsively caregiving types. You need to express your anger, but not with flailing limbs and words that hurt the ears of others. Anger needs to be expressed logically. This really bothered me when you said this. I felt like this when you said it. And the person may say, well, that's not what I meant at all. And if you, that you understand what they're trying to do, you have gained a friend. And somebody who will be closer to you will be more careful how they say things in the future. You need to address the stresses instead of putting them away and locking them away because they're going to kill you. Jesus Christ was the way, the truth, and the life. Whenever he spoke it was the truth. Nothing was hidden or kept from people. But he delivered it in ways that were loving with tears in his voice sometimes. 
but truth. When your body, when your body is not going along with what you're saying, you're creating a disease situation in your body because your body knows what is true in your mind and your words are saying something different. You've got a war going on. Whoa, look at this. In one study, psychologists interviewed patients admitted to hospital for breast biopsy without knowing the pathology results. They didn't know what these women had. But researchers were able to predict the presence of cancer in up to 94% of the cases, judging by such psychological factors alone. Like, how was your childhood? Were you distanced from your parents? Did you have upsets? Did you feel lonely? So on and so forth. They could predict who'd have breast cancer and who wouldn't. A study in Germany released 96% accuracy. This was done in America. Satan is the originator of disease, and the physician is warring against his work and power. We think we're fighting a disease. Brothers and sisters, it is the mind. Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Nine-tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundation here. This is true. Perhaps some living home trouble is, like a canker, eating to the very soul and weakening the life forces. Lord, have mercy on us. The state of the mind has largely to do with the health of the body. Wow, counsels and diet and foods. If you are in, con in constant fear that your food will hurt you, it most assuredly will. At all the cells in your body will only believe what your mind tells them to believe and can only produce what your mind tells them to produce. Brothers and sisters, this is the truth. What kind of choice are you going to make today? What kind of choice will you make for life or for death? For peace and happiness or for anger, resentment? I'll leave you with these words. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now do you see how deep the scripture goes, brothers and sisters? Do you see why Christ died to save the mind? Why he says, in me you shall have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. We need to be in Christ all the time for health, for God's glory, and for the blessing of humanity. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I have done the best that I know how to share with my brothers and sisters the depth of the creation you have made, the power you've placed within our hands through your sacrifice on Calvary to give us the choice and enable your children this day to choose life instead of death. May our focus be on Jesus, on all the good things you've done. May we learn to appreciate our bodies no matter what condition they may currently be in. May we be happy with the life you have given us and look forward to those new bodies and that wonderful place where stress does not exist. Gracious Lord, keep all of us this day and let nothing, nothing hinder the blessing you have prepared for us in Jesus' precious name we ask and thank you. Amen.